2012 Maritime Mac football championship game, and certainly we're very welcome to have Kent State representing our East Division as a perfect 8 0 record with a conference play and 11 1 overall, and 17th ranked overall in BCS standings. So we've got Coach Daryl Hazel, quarterback Spencer Keith, running back Dre Archer, linebacker Matt Kuzma. Thank you, welcome you guys, and we'll go ahead and let Coach open with a statement. We'll go ahead and take questions from the well, good afternoon, and uh, we're certainly excited to represent the east side of the division in this MAC championship game. Uh, we really look forward to playing a great Northern Illinois team that's very similar to us in a lot of different ways. I think they play great defense. Uh, they have a phenomenal quarterback, and they play excellent special teams, and uh, we're doing the same right now. So uh, we're really excited about this upcoming game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, and it's going to be a game that I think goes the full distance, and it'll be won in the last two minutes of the, the, the contest. So we're lo really looking forward to this contest. Coach, for you and Luke, um, Jordan's kind of like a linebacker playing quarterback. Just talk about the kind of problems he poses running the ball and passing. Well, he's so multidimensional. He, um, he's able to run it. The thing that worries you is when he scrambles around and keeps the ball alive, we got to do a good job in the back end. And, and uh, with our eye discipline and standing coverage. Uh, but he's very tough. That's uh, the thing that he brings to the table is he likes to run between the tackles. He's very physical, and uh, he gets his team going because of that. Like he said, he's a dual threat. And um, you know anybody that's like that is so much harder to stop because you know one play he could be you know, just regular quarterback, and then you know next play he could be it's kind of like a wildcat formation. It's just. You know, it's, uh, it's tough to defend, but I mean, you know, make him turn him into a one dimensional person, and, you know, it makes uh, things easier for us. I think you got to try to, to make him one dimensional. I think. You, that's what our defense has been good at, is making teams one-dimensional. Uh, our big philosophy has always been to stop the run, and he's part of the run this week. Uh, so we got to do a good job early in the football game trying to contain him and keeping his runs to you know, two-yard gains and three-yard gains and not letting him out for those 15- and 20-yard gains that he's uh, been renowned for. Coach? Yes. Uh, projected a possibly bust the BCS if you win this game, uh, maybe Orange or Sugar Bowl. Does that add any more pressure, or do you have any other thoughts on that? Our main focus is the game tomorrow night. And after what happens tomorrow night, we'll, we'll let the experts handle that. But uh, our main goal is to kick it off at 7.01. Spencer, do you feel like you've kind of waited your whole career for I mean, how do you, could you describe how you're feeling just to finally be in a game like this? I mean, it is a great feeling. It's a huge opportunity for our team and our program, really, because it's been a long time since we've been in one of these situations. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've been waiting for this personally um, for four years now, and uh, it's finally here. So it's time to take advantage. Are you nervous, or what would you? <laughs> nah, I mean, I'm not nervous now. Maybe right before the game a little bit, but um, I'm not one to get real nervous before games. So we'll see. The fact that you've got two great running backs. I how do you handle the, you're almost like the game manager. Are you okay with that kind of role? I mean, it's worked all year, so of course. <laughs> I mean, they, we do have two great running backs and a great offensive line that um, opens some gaps and holes for them to run through, and uh, they've done a great job all year, so look to continue that. Spencer, last year against uh, Northern Illinois, you were on uh, bench for Cedric McLeod. How far have you come since that game? Uh, I mean, I feel like I have come really far, um, taking care of the ball especially. Um, towards the latter part of last season and this season. Um, that, that was my focus after my midway point of last season. So um, I felt like I've done a lot better job of that and just managing the game well. Coach, can you speak to that as well? Me? Yeah. How far Spencer's coming? He's been exceptional for us. Um, you know, he's really taken upon it himself to make sure that uh, this offense moves forward and, and it all starts with his ball security. Uh, I can't be more proud of anybody on our football team than this guy sitting to my left uh, because he has battled through some adversity and we, we brought some guys in to compete with him and he fought them off and has done an excellent job of leading this football team to 11 wins. Coach, you talk about uh, having Archer a big play. 
Well, you know, anytime you got a guy like Dre that uh, whenever he touches the football, you have a chance to score. Uh, it allows defenses to be on their heels. Uh, we can move him around in many different positions and try to get him the ball a lot of different situations. But it's always a situation where you know you're in the game because he's nine or ten seconds away from a touchdown. Well, it, that's funny that you say that because they play extremely well together. You wouldn't even know that they were a new bunch. Um, and I think the thing that they do very well, just watch them, is cover guys up so their playmakers can make some plays. For a, a couple of the players, um, because both teams are ranked, uh, you have the DCS angle kind of hanging out there. I think there more people will be watching tomorrow night uh, than maybe would under a different circumstance around the country. What is it you'd like the country to know about Mac football and what Mac football is about playing it? Well, it's uh, it's definitely not as looked down upon as you know as it might have been you know previous years. I mean, you know, uh, there's a thing trending around talking about how Big East shouldn't schedule MAC teams in September and stuff like that. It's uh, you know, it's, it takes a you know it, we've just been working so hard and obviously. You know, Mac isn't you know something to look down upon anymore, and you know it's such a great feeling to be a part of that, and you know be in this game that we are in now. Who else? Um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, in the past, you know, teams have looked down on the Mac, you know, but you know we're we're, we're a powerful powerful conference, you know, you know this year we got we got six plus teams and you no know, bowl eligible, you know we're we're a real good um, conference, and I, I feel like you know a lot more teams will be afraid to play us. When a team like Central goes to Iowa and wins, and uh, Iowa and State and wins, do you feel that helps with the ability to all those back in the city of the Is that addressed to me? Oh, I think so. And I have always said that, you know, in this league, the teams are have a lot of talent, a lot of good coaching. And any time that you can play a team outside, in a BCS conference, and you play them once or twice a year, you got a chance to win. Uh, would you want to line up with them 12 weeks in a row? Probably not. But if you go head to head once or twice a season, you got a chance. How much is the, and maybe this is just development, but how much is the stability of the conference structure related to considering what's going on around you in terms of uh, all the transition with all the other leagues? How much is maybe that helping? That's been big, I think, because if you, you look across the globe uh, on the football scene, guys are leave, teams are leaving conferences left and right, and this conference has been solid for quite some time now. I mean, you get one or two teams in and out, but it's been very solid for a long time. It's, you know, a turning point was, you know, probably, you know, after our bye week last year, which is, you know, really when it has been. And it's, uh, it's been more of a, you know, people just, I mean, we got a lot of people, like players on the team that, um, you know, have a lot of trust and faith and, you know, Coach Hazel and, you know, all of our other coaches. And, you know, obviously we haven't, you know, been that great of a team and it's just, we have a lot of determined players that want to be great and, you know, we're going to do anything they can to, you know, be great. And um, which is probably why we've, you know, had such a quick turnaround, you know, winning 15 in the last 17 and stuff like that. And it's, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, tip of the hat to Coach Hazel and, you know, you know, keep grinding on us and, you know, keeping with that, you know, keeping at us about, you know, being great. And, you know, it, 
it's just that's why you know we had such a quick turnaround. You know, we got a lot of determined players to you know be great and have a turnaround. Well, did you expect to be here? Did I expect to be here? Um, I definitely expected a lot of success for sure when we started the season. Uh, just looking around in our locker room, um, the talent level and the co coaching staff, uh, and you know, we think that we're a pretty good football team coming into the season. You never know what you, what's going to happen throughout the course of the season, but uh, I knew we had a chance to be pretty good. What's the difference between five and seven? Well, I think is it's a little bit what Luke touched on, the, the closeness in our locker room, um, a trust, a belief. And, that, and if you look at our guys' eyes, they never get down. They never get rattled. And uh, there's a, a quiet confidence about our football team. And I think that's the difference between 5-7 and seven and 11-1. Reed, talk a little bit about, and this may go some of the same questions, talk about your health. And then number two, maybe special people kicking on this. This is the first year, I think, maybe five, six, seven years, where you haven't had an injury at quarterback, where the same quarterback that started the season finished the season. How big is that been? Some of the success. How healthy are you? Is what I'm asking. Oh, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'll be ready to play tomorrow night. <clears throat> but at the beginning of the season, you know, the coach staff and coach Hazel, you know, they they wanted to minimize my touches as less as possible. So it's like. 15 to 20 times a game, you know, to keep me in the back end of the season as in November and, and now. But, I mean, now the last few weeks is giving the ball as many times as you can. But, um, yeah, you know, having a healthy quarterback, that helps our team a lot, you know. When you transition quarterbacks, you know, players start to get down, you know, they start feeling sorry. But when you have one good quarterback like we have at Spencer all season, you know, it helps things out a lot. How does it feel being on such a big stage like this tomorrow? Oh, it feels good, you know. This, this is why we play the game, you know. We, we uh we've been we've been working hard all all year for this, and we're just ready to play tomorrow night. Let's talk about being healthy and how much that is played. Not just you, but the whole team. I think you did get many injuries along the second year. All year. Correct. We had uh, Calvin Tigo. We lost uh, in the Army game, and we lost Tyshawn Good before the season even started, second or third day of practice. But that was it. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely helps, just that consistency factor. Um, just um, for me, personally, being able to lead the team throughout the season and uh, not having to worry about that injury, um, like I did my freshman year, I mean, that happened then and it definitely hurt. But um, yeah, it definitely helps some. Just the confidence in the players, I think, um, stays up. And you don't really have to think about switching quarterbacks or how this guy's going to respond to a different pl player on the field. I think when you have a mature team the way we do, you know, some older guys that played a lot of football, you don't have to practice as much. Um, and when you can take the pants off halfway through the season and quick whistle practices, you keep guys healthier. And I think that's helped us a lot down the back end. Spencer, you and uh, Eric had, I mean, had a couple big plays over late in the last couple of weeks. Can you just talk about the chemistry you two developed late in the season? Yeah, I mean, it's really just the play calling. I mean, um, He's gotten a lot more confidence over the over the year, and uh, I think I don't know. It started probably in that Army game when he had that big touchdown on the corner route. But um, we do have some chemistry working right now, and um, hopefully it keeps up uh, tomorrow night. Coach, I noticed some in USA Today where they had the coach's salary and the bonus money. Yeah, I think they said something that if you went to a BCS, it would be zero. Did you kind of wish that maybe you know you would? Have I, I should probably see this <laughs> well, I should probably renegotiate my contract with our athletic director Joel <laughs> Nielsen back here. <laughs> no, we don't worry about that right now. Did you not think of adding that for No, actually, I didn't. To be honest with you. <laughs> you mentioned earlier the, the stability of the lead. You think is helpful. How, how is that? Is that just when you're out recruiting, people know what the Mac is? Why, why does it help? Well, the other leagues, you know, some of them have been revolving doors here the last couple of years. And uh, for whatever reason, I'm not saying that's good or bad. Uh, it's just the way it's been. And this one has not been. And uh, that's why it's been so solid. Did, did you feel that you had a chance to really move up? Because, I mean, if you look at 
that's a match. I mean, since 2000, every school has been in this hmm. championship game set Easter. I mean, so did you kind of feel like this is a conference where why not? Well, that that's absolutely one of the reasons why I took this job was because I thought that the the parity in the the teams that are so, they're all comparable in the league, and if you study this league. Um, anyone has a chance to win it. And, you know, you take a look at Miami a couple of years ago, we're at the bottom, and then the next year they're at the top. And it's been like that uh, for quite some time where the, the, the talent level's the same, the coaching's the same, which is both of them are very good. So you got a chance to win. And a lot of people are saying that you guys are the underdog, six, seven point underdog. Um, do you go back and say, well, look, Ball State was ranked number 12 just a few years ago. To be perfectly honest with you, I never look at the underdog scores and all that stuff. It's about what we do and our execution. And uh, I know what kind of football team we have. And uh, if we are execute, we have a chance to win the football game. It obviously helps over course turnovers. Oh, absolutely. And our, and our team has done a good job of getting the ball from other teams. He's a, he's a great leader in the huddle. You know, when guys are fooling around, you no know, being too loud, and we can't hit the quarterback, you know, he, he makes everybody calm down, be quiet. But he's a great leader on and off the field. Does he have to keep you guys in the line? Nah, I mean, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm good in the huddle. Some guys, they get out of control a couple of times. Yeah, Jareen, uh, I noticed your, your big playmaker was some um, eye-popping st uh, stats, but you're not talked about nationally as much as some other players are. Um, do you think you lack recognition or respect nationally? And Coach can talk about it too. I mean, that's out of my hands. You know, I try not to feed in too much of that stuff. So, you know, I think he's one of the most talented players in the country. Um, and perhaps that's unfair for me to say because I haven't studied everybody. But I don't know if there's too many four-two guys that change directions and make people miss in the hole the way he does.